All right, uh, I'll start off with a travel announcement, um, which will be no surprise to most of you. The Secretary General will be in Geneva on Monday, where he will speak at the opening of the 40th session of the UN Human Rights Council. He will also speak at a special session of the Conference of Disarmament on that day. Later the afternoon, the Secretary General and the, in, the President of the International Committee for the Red Cross, Peter Maurer, will deliver a joint statement on sexual and gender-based violence and conflict. And in the evening, the Secretary General will address the Geneva Association of the UN Correspondents Association on Press Freedom and Journalists Under Attack. And on Tuesday, he will convene a high-level pledging conference for the humanitarian crisis in Yemen, uh, co-hosted by Sweden and Switzerland, of which you heard quite a bit about today. The event is an important opportunity for the international community to make clear its continuing commitment to save the lives of starving and vulnerable people in Yemen. <coughs> Excuse me. The continuing on Yemen, as you will have heard, the Special Envoy for Yemen, Martin Griffiths, briefed the Security Council by video conference this morning on what he called the significant progress made in implementing the agreements reached in Stockholm. He welcomed the agreement on the redeployment of the parties, uh, first from Salif and Ras Issa, and then from the port of Hodeida as a first step. Mr. Griffiths said that despite deadlines being missed, the parties have consistently showed their commitment to the agreement. He added that he has continued to work on the release of prisoners by the parties, saying that the watchword for the process is a release of all for all. He expressed hope that the release of the first batch of prisoners could take place soon. Mark Lowcock, the emergency relief coordinator, for his part, said that about 80 percent of the Yemeni population, that's about 24 million people, need humanitarian assistance and protection. Some 20 million people need help securing food, including 10 million who are just a step away from famine. In some things, he, he said things are very bad, and unfortunately, aid agencies are running out of money. Mr. Lowcock said that we expect current resources to be used by the end of March, just six weeks from now. He noted that next week's meeting in Geneva on funding for Yemen and urged member states to attend the meeting at a senior level and, of course, to pledge generously. Together, he said, we can save a million more lives in Yemen, but only if we have the resource that we need. <clears throat> and uh, the U UN and humani UN, the humanitarian appeal from the UN and the humanitarian partners for Yemen is at $4.2 billion to help up to 19 million people in need. Uh, after four years of, con of conflict, the humanitarian crisis in Yemen is the world's worth, worse, with 10 million people being one step away from famine. Uh, since 2015, nearly 10, 15% of the people in Yemen have been forced to flee their homes, the vast majority of whom are still displaced. Turning to Syria, uh, the United Nations condemns the reported bombing of the city of Idlib yesterday, which resulted in civilian deaths and injuries, many of whom were women and children. At least 17 people were reportedly killed in twin explosions on the al Qasr neighborhood in Idlib, and nearly 100 people were reportedly injured, including civilians and aid volunteers. The UN is gravely concerned by reports of what it seems to be an instigation of hostilities and an increasing number of casualties in the northwest part of Syria. Meanwhile, 130 schools in Idlib governorate remain suspended due to hostilities impacting nearly 50,000 children. The United Nations continues to call on all the parties to the conflict to respect their obligations under international humanitarian law and international human rights law and to ensure the protection of civilians to put an end to the destruction of hospitals and other civilian infrastructures that are essential for the civilian population. And just to flag that the Secretary General announced today that he has appointed seven experts to serve on the newly established Civil Society Advisory Board on the Prevention of Sexual Exploitation and Abuse. The aim of the board is to foster closer interaction with civil society and external experts and organizations as part of the UN's efforts to combat sexual exploitation and abuse. We issued a note to correspondence on this earlier with more information of, and the biographies of the members of the board. And I just need to respond to a couple of questions that were asked either yesterday or offline. One is on the Central African Republic and uh, responding to questions on the UN peacekeeping mission's role during the violence that took place in Batafango in late October of last year. When the violence erupted on the 30th and 31st of October of last year, including setting fires to the camp, uh, 
fired by to the um, internally displaced people's camp by Exelica. The peacekeeping mission uh, peacekeepers intervened by removing the Exelica uh, fighters and helping to protect humanitarian and local administration officials, as well as hundreds of IDPs who fled towards the mission's temporary base. As the tensions continued in beginning of November, peacekeepers patrolled, by, uh, patrolled the Batafango Buka and the Batafango Cabo <laughs> axes to deter violence by armed groups and protect civilians. The mission also deployed additional troops to restore security in the city. The peacekeeping mission immediately launched an internal investigation to look in the events in the response to the mission. The report is currently being finalized and its outcomes will be shared publicly. Uh, should the investigation into allegations conclude that the peacekeepers' performance was insufficient in Batafango, appropriate remedial actions will be taken to improve the delivery of the protection mandate. Um, and I was also asked about recent uh, incident involving the UN Military Observer Group in India and Pakistan, known as UNMOGIP. The mission, uh, the Observer Group reported on February 16th that a UN vehicle in the city of Jammu was surrounded by a group of protesters who placed a Pakistani flag in front of the vehicle. The vehicle attempted to bypass the flag but was unable to do so. The mission has informed both India and Pakistani authorities of this regrettable and unavoidable circumstances of the incident. The mission also requested India to provide additional escorts and will be conducting an investigation. And just to flag that new data released today by the UN Refugee Agency shows that despite record levels of forced displacement, just 4.7% of global refugee resettlement needs were met last year. This means that out of 1.2 million refugees in need of resettlement in 2018, only 55,692 were resettled. Most refugees uh, resettlement from Syria and Democratic Republic of the Congo, Eritrea, and Afghanistan. 68% of referred refugees were survivors of violence and torture, had legal and physical protection needs, or were women and girls at risk. And I think those numbers show uh, down from 2017. Uh, and more information is available on UNHCR's website. Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Yes, James. I have two questions on unrelated matters. One of them relates to what you were just talking about, though, India and Pakistan. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand the Secretary General is meeting the permanent representative of Pakistan in the coming hours. This follows uh, the comments from the Foreign Minister of Pakistan, Foreign Minister Qureshi, who said the UN must step in mm -hmm to defuse tensions. There's a direct request from one of the parties involved in this tension. Yeah. To get involved, is the SG going to take that role? Uh, first of all, uh, we have to wait for the, for the meeting. The meeting is taking place at the request of the permanent mission of, of Pakistan. We've seen press reports of a letter having been delivered to the UN. As far as we've ascertained, not, none has been uh, received as of, uh, as of this very uh, minute. Obviously, looking at the situation in general between India and Pakistan, we're, we're deeply concerned at the increase in tensions uh, between the two countries in the wake of the attack on Indian security personnel on February 14th in uh, Pulwama. Uh, the Secretary General stresses the importance for both sides to exercise maximum restraint and take immediate steps to de-escalation, and his good officers are always available should both sides ask. Second question is about the UN budget. I noticed you didn't announce any new countries that have paid their dues. Um, no, that, that's due to, it's, it just so you know, it's due to the fact that yesterday was one of these floating holidays, and so we wouldn't have gotten... If but there, there has been a new letter, I believe, from the chef de cabinet yeah. to, to, to senior officials of the mm -hmm. UN um, talking about how dire the budgetary mm -hmm. situation is. Can you explain to us how bad things have got? Uh, the Secretary General, I think, will be speaking to an uh, informal meeting of the General Assembly soon to, to go into, into details. As we have uh, explained in the past, there are issues of, uh, of cash flows. There are issues of how the budget uh, process is designed, the Secretary General, which I, I would also add has been his message from day one, was just to cut uh, expenses as much as, as possible for the time being. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Zephyr. Yesterday, the Secretary General um, 
met with the new ambassador of Mexico, mm -hmm. um, Ambassador De La Fuente. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us, um, as you, as far as you can tell us, uh, what was uh, said on that meeting, especially in terms of Venezuela? Um, the ambassador shared with us that um, they spoke about Venezuela mm -hmm. and talked about the possibility of dialogue um, and the um, how happy the Secretary General was about the position of Mexico of being a neutral uh, partner mm -hmm. in the region. You know, the Secretary General has said that he, uh, while he did not participate in any of the uh, the various meetings that took place in the last 10 days, one of which was, was sponsored by Mexico, he very much welcomed uh, these initiatives. Uh, as far as the Secretary General's position, it remains unchanged. His good offices remain uh, available, and he continues to believe in the need for serious political negotiations. <coughs> Excuse me, I did too much screaming over the weekend. Steph, has been any um, meet, any talks with any of the governments? Because the problem is we haven't heard anything from uh, either Mexico in terms of <coughs> approaching Venezuela or the Guaido camp um, or um, the Secretary General. But it, is the possibility? Do we have any um, hope? Look, I, I, I think I understand. Uh, I think everyone's legitimate uh, interest in knowing any new develop political developments. The Secretary General remains, uh, and, and other senior UN officials remain in touch with various parties, various countries on this issue. When we have something to announce, uh, we shall. Madam. Uh, Stephen, regarding uh, Yemen and Mr. Griffiths, um, so he talked about two phases of uh, the first one is uh, redeployment in uh, ports of Salif and Ras uh, Aisa. Mm -hmm. uh, could you break, I mean, is there now a, a better understanding for who is going to take control in these airports when this redeployment is happening? Because if I understood it right, there was always this dispute about what will happen after the de redeployment. Is it clear now or? You know, I think we want to take this, uh, this whole process extremely carefully, one day at a time. I think uh, Mr. Griffiths was as clear and forthcoming as he, as he could be. Uh, we're obviously uh, looking for the, for the parties to immediately start the implementation with, of the of the redeployment, which we said could happen uh, could happen very soon. So I'm I'm not going to go into any detail that Mr. Griffiths himself did not go into. But uh, follow up. But what does that exactly mean? So they are going to leave their areas and then. The, the point is, I mean, the the, the the it's obviously important confidence building measures. It's also important, this is extremely important for us because it will make the humanitarian access around the port of Hodeida much easier to the Red Sea Mills a lot, uh, a lot easier. And the deployment also of obviously of, of UN monitors easier. Yes, sir. And then we'll go to Mario. Yes, you mentioned um, the UN's uh, concern with the ratcheting up of violence in the northwest part of Syria. And you, you mentioned uh, increased bombings. Uh, could you provide, or does the UN have information uh, to provide a bit more detail on the source of the bombing? Uh, is it from the air, or suicide bombing, or a mix? Uh, and if there's any information on who might be responsible, at least for part of the, some of the bombing? No, we don't have any of the. Uh What's the term I'm looking for? Uh, we don't have any, uh, at this point, a, a mandate or the, or the tools to allow us to know exactly who conducted uh, these attacks on uh, civilians or who's responsible for the attacks of civilians. The point for us is to ensure that every party involved in this conflict needs to assure the safety of civilian and civilian infrastructure. Mario, and then the gentleman all the way in the back. Uh, just to follow up on Venezuela, uh, with the tension increasing around these deliveries of aid and uh, the deadlines that are coming up, um, threats by the U.S. president to the Venezuelan military yesterday, uh, what's the message of the Secretary General regarding a possible outbreak of violence uh, in the border? Uh, Look, we're, we're clearly uh, worried and concerned about uh, about the situation on the ground. We've expressed, Secretary General has expressed it uh, clearly uh, from the beginning of this, uh, this current round of, of, this, the, uh, of the crisis. We are uh, appealing for all parties to, uh, to move towards 
a political, uh, serious political negotiations uh, and any de-escalation of, of the tensions that we're seeing. Sure. The question on Nigeria's postponement of mm -hmm. the election. I saw the statement read by Farhan from the UN and Observer yep. Missions. Has there been any outreach from the Secretary General to the um, political principles in Nigeria? There seems to be a sort of an eerie calm around, uh, you know, the elections in a country that historically, you know, if you ignore 2015, uh, things could go very bad very quickly. No, I mean, we're, we're obviously aware of the situation and the history of, uh, of electoral related violence uh, that, we, that we've seen sometimes in the years in, in Nigeria. Mr. Chambas represents the Secretary General, and he is very much in touch uh, with all the relevant parties in Nigeria. Carla. Um, I may have missed your discussion of uh, the India-Pakistan situation, but one of my more reliable or most reliable sources in Pakistan suggested to me this morning that if fighting does break out, it could become nuclear. Do you know anything about that? No. Uh, Mario. Just a follow-up on the earlier question. You've talked before about the need to uh, depoliticize, depoliticize the, yep. uh, the, um, the humanitarian, humanitarian aid. aid. Yeah. Uh, does DSG consider these operations in, uh, that are taking place are a political use of uh, I, I think the, aid? the depoliticization of aid uh, and the need to do that applies across the board. Thank you all.